Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel. Now, I know I've been a little MIA on the YouTube videos lately. I have been hard at work trying to dial in this plasma table. I kind of just needed a little bit of time to go all in with this table and really figure it out. And I'm having some issues, some really big issues that are kind of keeping me from cutting what I want to cut. So what's going on is it is burning through electrodes. So if you look at this electrode, you can see it's completely melted and the uh, tips don't look much better. And here's another one that kind of burnt up. So focus, come on. So what's happening is the electrode, I think, is like arcing off of the nozzle and it's just overheating it and melting the electrode. A lot of people, pretty much everybody that I've talked to said, it's moisture in your air. It is moisture in your air. Nothing else can cause it. So I'm gonna dive in right now and see if we can figure this out. So if you guys remember, I built a copper, that big copper water trap. Now that's been working okay, but there's been one major design flaw with my system. So they say you want about 20 to 25 feet of pipe before your cooler so that the air can actually cool off before it makes it all the way through the cooler. I think my area is staying warm through my cooler because it is way too close to the compressor. So I got some pipe here. I got a bunch of fittings. We are gonna add a bunch of pipe on the wall in between the compressor and that cooler. I think that's gonna help. Now I have been having a lot of fun cutting some parts out as you can see here. I did some custom bottle openers and hitch covers. Now these are for sale. I actually just was selling these to people on Instagram. But if you guys are interested in any of these, I do have a few left. Go ahead and drop a comment or you can email me. I'll have my email address in the description box. But you can see they are getting quite a bit of dross on the backside. Now it does come off. You gotta scrape it off and grind it off but I really want to get the machine dialed in to where we don't have to spend a bunch of time cleaning up these parts so I did go through sandblast them powder coat them these things are looking sweet I did black and bronze but like I said I really want to get this machine dialed in so this is a setup I got the compressor right here and I have like a three foot hose into the cooler setup so the air goes through up and down up and down I got valves on the bottom here which I do get water out of those but I still get like you can see right there I still get water in my trap and these were new yesterday you can see they're already starting to get wet and I haven't really done a whole lot now when I'm sandblasting and this compressor is working hard it does get pretty hot and these beads pretty much you know within like a half hour they turn pink so I definitely am getting uh, moisture but I I, I still don't know if that's what's causing my issues on here because I have this motor guard filter right here which is supposed to be really good and it is a thousand percent dry. Now what you can do is take a mirror and do a mirror test. You know when you breathe on a mirror it'll fog up instantly. Now I, I probably sprayed just with a regular air nozzle and stuck it on a mirror for like five minutes. I didn't get a single fog, a single bit of moisture. I'm not totally convinced that moisture is my problem but I know it is a problem, so we're going to fix that.
All right, we are back together and I got my hopes high for this. I really think it's gonna work. I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, well, the heat's rising. Well, I think honestly, it's probably a lot cooler right there than it is right behind that air compressor. All the heat was kind of concentrated in this one area. So I think it's gonna work a lot better now. I did order up all brand new half inch uh, air hose. I think that's gonna help with just volume wise. The 3.8s probably, honestly, will probably work just fine. But I figured I might as well upgrade that as well. So we are good to go on this system, I think. So I've been doing a bunch of testing and a bunch of cutting. It seems as if what we did to this air fixed our issue. So this thing is cutting way, way better. I cut a bunch of stuff. Let's check it out and then let's pull the nozzle and electrode out and see how they look. So you can see we cut some stuff out. We got two of these Toyota signs. I got four of these ones here and then uh, I don't know, five of these smaller ones there. So I mean, just look at these cuts though. It's Honestly, it's really, really clean. The backside used to be really crappy. It's actually almost looks the same as the front side. I think the new torch is definitely gonna help, but I've never had a cut that good. And the dross, I know I already cleaned them up. I should have showed you that before. Honestly, not bad, not bad at all. All I did was use this knotted wire wheel and it rips it right off really quick, really easy. The only other thing I did besides that air is I wrapped up the torch right here with a bag. Some people are saying it's possible that moisture is getting in through the trigger assembly and then going into the torch and messing everything up. All right, we got this apart. You can see inside the tip or the uh, actual nozzle here, there's a few of those little arc marks, but not bad. I think some of that is normal. The other one before was like super, super black, super dark and you know look pretty bad this tip actually still looks really nice one thing i'm having though is uh like slag or dross getting stuck on this tip so then the height control when it comes down and touches the metal is going to be off because there's that crap sitting on the bottom so i got to figure out something with that but also here is the electrode still looking really really good before they were turning black i think that was from the moisture and now it's i mean it got a little bit of color you can see a little bit of blue you can see little swirl marks and it you know obviously it's wearing but that looks a lot better than before Well, look what showed up. We got the X45 torch, as you can see here. This thing is sweet. So this actually uses the hypertherm consumables, which are supposed to cut a thousand times better than what's in my torch right now and then i know you guys are curious what these are these are actually little silicone funnels that you cut the inside out and slip it over the torch kind of hike it up here and it helps the water from splashing back up onto the torch and on the z-axis on the actual machine so we're going to do that and then this is what i am most excited about this is a new magnetic mount for it's specifically made for the machine torches and specifically made for the crossfire pro he does make them for the original crossfire and i think he's actually making one for the xr but this thing is sweet so it bolts on with this plate here you can see these holes bolt on so this plate magnetizes to this plate and what's really nice about that if you have a little tip up or you're cutting something out and it tips up if the torch rams into it and it doesn't fall off if like mine's bolted on solid if my torch hits a piece that is jammed up it's going to mess something up with a machine that's going to be binding and it's just going to cause issues with that magnetic mount it has a chance to 
you know, break the torch off. The torch is just gonna fall onto the table and you just pause the program. It's not gonna hurt anything. So that'll potentially save some issues on the machine and on the torch smacking into parts. So if you guys wanna check any of this stuff out, the X45 torch I bought from a company called Plasmadyne or Plasmadin. I think what they do is take these X45 torches and they modify them to fit a vast array of different machines. So this one is specifically made for my Prime World Cut 60. I think it's a lot to do with the pins you can see there's two pins up top I'm not sure what else they change on them but I do know they're kind of specific to the machine so that is what we got like I said these are a hypertherm consumable but Plasmadyne actually makes all these I know the actual consumables from hypertherm are pretty expensive these are a lot more reasonable so I bought a bunch of different tips I also bought this fine cut kit which is made for like really thin and detailed cuts on thinner material so I'm excited to try that as well that's gonna be a lot smaller of a cup so like detailed signs and whatnot that's gonna be super handy on and then that magnetic mount that is from a company called Goheen cycles he he's more into like motorcycle stuff but he's got one of these tables and he designed and produces these mounts if you guys want to check that super sweet mount out go check out goheencycles.com I'll have all this stuff like I said all these links down in the description box one other thing real quick since you guys saw I redid all of my uh, copper tubing up there it's not working it's still not catching a lot of the moisture i drain those valves every day like twice a day just to see i haven't got a single bit of moisture out of those valves which doesn't make much sense because i added the tw like 25 more feet of pipe in between the compressor and that cooler and i'm still not getting moisture i'm getting a little bit in my desiccant filter so I don't know what to do. One thing I may do is put a cooler in between the actual pump on the compressor and the tank. So I'll have to take that line and remake my lines. A lot of people use like a transmission cooler and it's supposed to work really good for not actually filling up the tank on the compressor with moisture. So I may do that. I may have to order up all that stuff, but I'm really curious because it seemed to work better before with less pipe in between the copper trap and the compressor and with it kind of sucked into that corner where all the heat is which doesn't make any sense to me but I don't know I know the air getting to my plasma is it should be pretty dry just because I do have a separate filter at the plasma so I don't know if you guys have any ideas on that whole air situation let me know Well guys, this is the end of two days. I've been just cutting and cutting and cutting my ass off, trying to figure out the best settings for this new torch. Now, you can see on this table back here, I have a ton of stuff I cut and I started with 316. For some reason, the thicker metals actually are easier to get a good cut on. So 
I've been cutting and cutting. We got 3 16 pretty dialed in. I'll show you guys in a sec. But we got 3 16 and quarter inch really, really close. This is, I've been working on eighth inch now, and this is what we got. You can see there's a little bit of dross on there, not bad. Now, the hypertherm consumables are a little bit different. They only have really one nozzle size, and then they have a fine cut, which is for like thinner materials. Now they say you can go up to about an eighth inch plate with the fine cut. So I'm, I got these pretty close. I'm gonna swap in the fine cut and bump down the amperage and see if we can get this thing dialed in. But let me show you guys how close we got this thing with 3 16ths and quarter inch. So we've got a big pile here and my ending, I found the best settings for 3 16ths, uh, 46 amps in about 62 inches a minute. And this, I didn't peel any of the dross off. This is exactly how it came off of the table. You can see pretty clean. There's a little bit of bevel that I've been chasing and chasing. I probably spent four hours trying to figure out what this one one sided bevel is from. It's not beveled on this side, just on this side. And it ends up, at least I haven't tried it again on 3 16ths, but when I went to quarter inch, I cranked up the air pressure all the way as high as it can go on the machine. And the bevel is way better, just that five PSI. I cut those other ones at uh, 75. This is 80 PSI and the settings are 49 amps, 54 inches a minute, and 80 PSI there. So that's really clean. There's you know a little bit of dross, I'm sure, a, a little bit of fine tuning, a little more messing around. Probably get that a little bit cleaner, but I'm happy with that. Anyway, here is the fine cut. Now, I'm gonna swap this in. Like I said, I'm gonna try to dial in this 11 gauge, and then I wanna try to mess around with 14 gauge here. So here's a peek at how much steel I've wasted. We got two sheets there, a couple of little sheets there, all these tiny little pieces, but we got this stuff really close. This is eighth inch. Now I couldn't get the fine cuts here. I couldn't get the fine cuts to cut very nice. This is with the standard consumables at 125 inches a minute right there. And look at that. There's a little bit of dross right at the pierce, but other than that, it is literally perfect. So I am happy with that. As far as 14 gauge goes, this is as clean as I could get. 153 inches a minute with a fine cut at 28 amps. You can see a little bit of dross. Uh, a lot of people say 14 gauge is one of the harder uh, thicknesses to cut for some reason. Um, but after all these tests, I came up with 153 inches a minute, and I think I'm happy with that. Well, I'm gonna wrap this one up here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you kinda like the plasma upgrades. Now, once we get this torch dialed in perfectly, uh, once we do some big cuts with it and kinda make our adjustments from there, I think I'll be really, really happy with it. And it's nice having that fine cut tip. The cut width or the kerf width is almost half of what the standard consumables are with that fine cut. So it's gonna be nice for like smaller cuts on thinner material like 14, 16 gauge. It's gonna work a lot 
better for that. And like I said, I put all of the stuff I cut and powder coated, all that stuff is up on the website. So avrcustoms.com, like I said, there's a link down in the description box if you guys wanna check out anything I got. And also I know I'm not completely dialed in, but I will be taking like custom orders. Now I can actually cut something off of a picture. If you send me a picture with measurements on it, I can actually design a piece off of that in Fusion 360 and cut it out. I've done that a couple times with other parts and it works really good. So like I said, once we're dialed in, I, I will be taking some custom orders, kind of if you guys need anything cut, let me know. All right guys, update from a couple days later after I actually finish this video. I wanna let you guys know I figured out the source of my problems on my plasma cutter, plasma table setup. I've been fighting bevels, I've been fighting dross, I've been fighting just crappy cuts in general. I finally found the issue today. So I went to go put the hand torch back on my machine. I went to go put it back in the machine and the lead right here, uh, there's an O-ring that seals from the machine to the torch right here. The O-ring was stuffed inside of this hole right here. So this, this hand torch had a massive blockage and with the machine torch on it, it had no O-ring. So it had a massive air leak right there. I wasn't getting anywhere near enough air to the actual torch. So after I stuffed the O-ring back in there, this thing is cutting awesome. This is some quarter inch right here. And the biggest thing I was having issues with was bevel. And you can see now plasma does, does have about like two to four degrees, maybe five degrees of bevel. But these things, this is quarter inch plate right here. And I mean, they are pretty pretty square way better than what i was fighting before i was like getting like 10 degrees of bevel so with that being said guys check that o-ring you can just take the lead off of the machine right there and that o-ring is back inside of the machine like an inch inch and a half so if you guys are having similar issues that is one thing you need to check well that's a wrap guys hope you enjoyed it why don't you go smash that thumbs up button comment subscribe we'll see you in the next one